Hi there. Today's video I initially made for my spirituality and awakening YouTube channel. However, as I was speaking, matters came up that are relevant to my expose. So I'm going to put this video to both platforms my spirituality and awakening platform, which is under my name, Rachel Caruso, and my whistleblowing platform, which is under the name, No Witness. So in this video, we're talking about disclosure from a deeper place of integrity, personal philosophy. So in this way, it is supporting spirituality awakening, consciousness, healing, but it's also supporting the disclosure of my information about MK Ultra. And this is going to be a video on my No Witness platform that weeds out those who are there for entertainment and those who are there for truth and healing and for the improvement of themselves in the world. It's a longer video, but everything that's in this video is there for a reason. So thank you for your time and attention and your dedication to truth and healing. I hope this video helps to illuminate things for you. Hi everyone, this is Rachel Caruso, your guide into integrative shamanism. It's been a while since I put my face on camera since I was looking at you, so to speak, um, I just felt like connecting with you on a more personal level for this particular message today. Yeah, I was just in the mood to be on camera. I'm not always in the mood for it. So I wanna let you know about some big changes coming for everybody. Um, I was actually going to make this video a week ago but I, I, I thought, well, it's not that important. Um, or maybe I'm just reading into things. But then some events transpired today, which confirmed what I had been tuned into last week. This message of big movement and big change. And I recognized today that Indeed, other people are going through this, and this message is needed for us all. So let's talk about these big changes. So the most recent new moon, which was about a week and a half ago, was a clearer of karma. It was about releasing the past to embrace your potential, to embrace your true path. So it was letting go of especially past stories, past attachments and past stories. And it was indeed about releasing karma. And what was great about this karma clearing is that it was a lot lighter in energy. So karmic clearing is usually very heavy. It feels so heavy and painful. And this new moon, there were emotions there, but it didn't feel heavy. The emotions were simultaneously infused with this love, this love that kind of transported us above all the density. So it was more of a transcendental experience. So you may have found in the past week and a half that you're going through personal changes. There's a lot of challenges. There's a lot of stuff being revealed to you. A lot of things coming out of hiding, whether it's in your own subconscious, whether it's uh, what you see around you in your relationships, in your community, in the whole world but you may have found that it was easier to face all of that. And it just felt right. It felt like 
it was overdue to face all of this. And if you hadn't noticed that in your life, maybe reflecting on the past week and a half, you actually do see it in retrospect. But if not, you could use this as an invitation to step into that lighter karmic clearing. So just set the intention to clear the past by letting what has been hidden arise to be witnessed so that you may live better aligned with your truth. And I want to specify further on this karmic clearing. Uh, when I talked about false attachments, a lot of that is to, it's to stories and narratives, but also to people. And believing that you have to live your life according to somebody else's needs or their narrative, or that other people have control over you. And so with this karmic clearing, releasing these attachments and beliefs that people control you, you, we are all now liberated to better live and express our truth. So we're talking about embodying your truth, but also communicating your truth directly to others. And this has been something that has been severely restricted in all of us. This was also a collective karma clearing of, um, whew, energy is intense. Um, so if you see me pause and I'm, I'm breathing, I'm breathing through this energy, this, what, what we were clearing was um, a lot of trauma around slavery and persecution for your truth. And predominantly, at least in this past new moon, in this time period, predominantly how that played out, which we are clearing, was through the persecution of black people and the enslavement of black people. And you know that continued on, the persecution continued on long after we supposedly abolished slavery. And also the oppression and persecution of the feminine. This is actually what is the witch wound. So everybody has masculine and feminine in them. And it's been the feminine energies which have been persecuted. And it's not that the masculine energies have gotten off scot-free because it doesn't work that way. They have to work in feminine and masculine have to work in tandem, balanced and partnered. If you move one side of you off as separate in order to persecute it, then of course, Feminine and masculine are no longer working in tandem. They are now in opposition. And so what's happened with the masculine energies is they have been perversed. And by that, I mean, they have been twisted. They are untrue. So things have been twisted around into uh, a form of masculinity that is without love and regard and compassion and empathy because that is the feminine side. So when you split off the feminine side, the masculine side automatically takes on this perverse role. And you know, I know that in our society, when we talk about perversion, we're normally talking about something of strictly of a sexual nature. And I'm not using the word in that context here. I'm not excluding sexual perversion with the masculinity, but we're just talking about this twisting of masculine energy. And that can manifest in any number of ways, not just sexually. And so when you have masculinity without femininity, you have force, power, control. Masculine energy is this straight moving, kind of a straight line of energy. 
It's direct. And without the feminine side, the intention behind this straight forward energy gets corrupted. This power becomes overactivated and used for the wrong reasons. And so when it's overactivated, it's about taking power over others, controlling over or controlling others. And on the feminine side, if you identify as female, that means that is your strongest expression, feminine energy, yet everybody has a certain recipe of balance that's unique to them. It's a balance of masculine and feminine. And so when you have disidentified from your masculine side, you end up in a submissive role. And so you have the masculine controlling others, the perverse masculine controlling others, and you have the perverse feminine submitting to it. You have narcissism and codependency. And we're not identifying narcissism or codependency as gender roles. Man or female can be a narcissist or a codependent. We're talking about feminine and masculine energies though. So narcissism is the perverse masculine energy and codependency is the perverse feminine energy. Remember, we all have masculine and feminine in us. So this is a matter that's relevant to everybody. And getting back to the witch wound is the persecution of the feminine. So that doesn't mean strictly people who identify as female. That means feminine energies, expressions that are aligned with the feminine. That includes emotions, intuition, healing, creativity, sensuality, compassion, empathy, and personal expression, because that's actually linked to creative energy. So the witch wound can affect men and women. It's attacking the feminine aspect. And so if you do identify as female, this is going to be magnified for you. It's going to feel like the majority of your identity, your core essence is being attacked and persecuted. It feels like it, it feels like you're being destroyed from the inside out and it feels utterly oppressive. So the witch wound and persecution of black people, especially in America, and of course this happens in many other countries as well, but the trauma that took place in America with black people is what has been clearing. It's what has caused such a trauma to the throat chakra, that alongside the witch wound. That's what has been recently clearing. Because to silence someone, we're, this is all about persecuting the, the expression, persecuting the truth and oppressing. If you want to oppress someone, don't let them be themselves. Don't let them express themselves cut off their voice. And um, you have no idea. Whew. You have no idea the collective trauma it created to hang people, people of all races, for any reason, but it had become such a pervasive problem when we were persecuting black people with hangings in America. The main way to clear karma though is to feel the emotions attached to those karmic traumas and to acknowledge what went wrong 
acknowledge what was needed, and then dedicate your life to executing that which was needed. And like I said, this time around of karma clearing was a lot lighter. It was so much more doable. And now that we've gotten that noose off from around our necks, we are liberated to speak up. This is going to create a tidal wave. You are part of this tidal wave. There are going to be big revelations on the world stage or the public arena. And every one of us who dedicates ourselves to living according to our truth and expressing it is a part of this tidal wave. We are contributing to it. And so understand that when you see big changes taking place, you are responsible for contributing to that. Not all of us are going to be on the world stage, but we all have our part to play. It is equally important that you play your part. So the universal energies have created a situation to create big movement and changes on the personal level, in your personal life. And that is connected to this collective change. So it gets, um, it ripples out to this collective change. So where you have power and control, what you're in charge of is you and your life. So notice the ways where you have an invitation for change to align with your truth and decide whether you're going to take that invitation or not. So this comes down to a matter of integrity. So this is something you really want to focus on at this time and moving forward because things are only going to intensify from here on out. I mean, you thought, you thought 2019 and 2020 were intense. In 2019, we had a lot of revelations about what the public knows as pedophilic human trafficking rings. 2020, we had this global pandemic psyop. So these are two distinct changes that affected the whole world. And there's so much more to that, like racial justice, the revelation of police corruption and brutality. These have been some monumental years in the, in the past two years. And this is just the beginning. So I implore that you do not bury your head in the sand and wait for the storm to pass. The storm is a movement. It's a planetary movement and you must join it. You must contribute to it. You must step out of the submissive role where you let others dictate what happens in the world and you just go along with it. There is nothing loving, peaceful, or spiritual about being passive and being submissive. Light is a force. You must be this force to reclaim yourself, to reclaim your soul. So integrity is a needs to be a big focus for us all. As everything intensifies, a lot more is revealed on the world stage. So recognize that your integrity comes from you. It's about your soul. More often than not, people are living by false morality. False morality is rules that have been handed to you or ex societal expectations that you seek to fulfill in order to remain in other people's good graces, in order to maintain a sense of approval and acceptance from others. False morality is these rules and societal expectations that you 
mold yourself to because you don't want to be thought of as a bad person because it will lose that sense of acceptance and approval. The corruption there in this morality is that it's not because you believe such and such actions make you a good person. You will not find your true morality from any external structures like rules and generational expectations. It will organically come through you. And you will understand the spiritual purpose behind your true morals. And that is why you are motivated to execute them, to embody them, to live them out. Your motivation won't be conformity for acceptance. Your motivation won't be to not get in trouble. There's a pretty effective test that you can use for yourself to find your true morality, or at least to identify where there's false morality. Ask yourself, if there was nobody else on the planet to witness what you were doing throughout your days, what would you do and why? Morality is about what you do when you believe no one is looking. If there are things that you avoid doing right now because you don't want to get caught, that's false morality. These are imposed rules that you do not share value with. So your integrity is living aligned to your morals, your principles, your values. But first, you have to identify what are your morals, your principles, your values. All of this comes from soul awareness. We all have soul awareness, but more often than not, we are trained out of ignoring it. So everybody has a soul or you wouldn't be alive. So your soul is inside you right now. It's never left you. The only way you can lose your soul is by creating a severe sense of disconnection because you don't heed your soul. Your soul is what is felt within you. You don't conceptually get in touch with your soul. It's not a mind thing, it's a felt thing. All truth is felt. So when you're looking for the truth of your soul, it's that which you feel inside you, that which you might be conditioned or used to numbing out, ignoring, negating, aka gaslighting yourself. So all it takes for soul awareness is the intention to let yourself feel what's deep within you. Everybody has that place of strong feeling deep within them. Most people are connected to that unless they're a psychopath and possibly if they're a sociopath, they might not have these feelings. It doesn't mean that they can't find them. But the rest of us, we, we experience on a daily basis these feelings, but we usually ignore them. And that is called living out of your integrity. That is called losing your soul. That's called sacrificing your soul. That's selling your soul to the devil. When you abandon your soul, you abandon God and you pander to a lower consciousness, of darkness, of fear. Luckily, your soul never abandons you. God never abandons you. You just have to make the choice to live united with them. God is there waiting for you. Your soul is there waiting for you with love. And I want to clarify as we're talking about, you know, I mentioned the devil, I mentioned darkness, I mentioned God. I'm not speaking in a religious sense and I never am in any of my videos. 
when I'm referring to God, that's the truest word for my soul, for the all that is. But that's what I'm referring to, the all that is. Maybe you conceptualize of it as the creator, the creative source, the divine, the universe. So you can use whatever terminology you like. So in these monumental times of change, you must stay focused on living within your integrity. Do not get distracted. Do not pander to your ego. And so we have to make a paradigm shift from ego to soul. And that includes shifting from acting to seek results or acting for the sake of your integrity, sake of your soul. So when we do something with a motivation for a certain result or outcome, we have abandoned the true motivation behind what we were after in the first place, that soul truth. So act for the sake of your truth and it's going to have the impact the way it's meant to. Things are going to play out the way they're meant to. You're not in control of that, God is. And don't discount the impact that you will see from you living aligned with your truth. You might see it happening in little ways, having little impact, but actually it's immense impact. We just happen to devalue life to such a degree that we think things only matter or are impactful when we, when the whole world knows us. We've discounted life so that we put numbers ahead of actual life. In other words, 30 lives are more important than one life. If that's your philosophy, then you have 30 meaningless lives in front of you. You cannot measure the value of life. Knowing the true value of life comes from humility. I made a separate video on that. So I'll link it in the corner to this video. Knowing the true value of life comes from empathy, comes from emotional presence, comes from soul presence. Ego likes measurement. Ego likes numbers. So realize if you can help one living creature, there is nothing better than that. There is nothing more impactful than that. You know, I have the most enlightening experiences whenever I rescue bugs in my home. You know, you have bug critters in your home and they don't belong there. They belong outside and you can kill them or you can ignore them or you can put in a solid effort to save them because you recognize that it's life. You recognize the value of life. So just think about that. You can have an immense impact on the world by rescuing the bugs that are in your house, set them free. See a bug caught on its back, wiggling its little legs, stuck, turn it over, set it free outside. If you encounter people in your day, and I'm sure you do, be emotionally present with them. Emotionally validate them. Let them know that they are seen, they are heard, they are felt. Let them know that they matter. Right, now we're going to go a little bit deeper into this movement, this global movement, um, to talk to the truth tellers. I want to talk to the truth tellers. Maybe you feel like you're a truth teller already. Maybe it's on your path and you just haven't identified it yet. By truth teller, I'm referring to the people who are called to use their voice in a loud and powerful way. And by loud, I don't 
mean you don't shout necessarily. Just that you make your voice known and you have a meaningful message to share. So it's everybody's throat chakra healing to, to express their truth. So all of us have this element of truth teller in one way or another. But some of us have this as our life purpose where it, it's the focal point for us. And more often than not, it's that we contain a perspective and truth that is not being spoken yet. It's not being shared. It's a truth that has remained hidden or simply not discovered yet. And you know you're a truth teller when you cannot tolerate this truth not being known. So when you recognize that you are a truth teller, you will find that you are suffering if you deny yourself speaking out about the truth. Being a truth teller is about living aligned with your soul, with your soul's integrity. The only resistance you get to that comes from the ego. So you have to choose what you're going to prioritize, your ego or your soul. Your ego tries to keep you comfortable, but you'll find that if you resist change, if you resist challenges, your level of suffering in where you are right now that you have deemed comfortable is going to become compounded. So you won't actually get what you're trying to seek through your ego, that comfort. And your ego is not your source for anything. It's not your source or sustenance. It's not a source of power. It's not a source of love. The ego, it has its function. But if we pander to the ego, then we're not employing it for its real function. We pander to the ego while abandoning the soul. That means we're living in fear. Fear is the opposite vibration of love. It's a state of powerlessness. It's a state of darkness. And the ego, it, it's tricky. It lies to you to try to keep you comfortable. One of those lies is that you won't have what you need. There's no power that you need in order to live these big changes. But when you align with your soul, your soul is your direct portal to God. You are literally connected to all that is. There's nothing more powerful than that. So you just have to recognize what the illusion of the ego is and and just decline it. So when people are beginning on the path of truth telling, they have a lot of fears that keep them from stepping into their life purpose, therefore honoring their soul. And one of those fears, well, it's a lot of it came from the witch wound, which was being persecuted for your truth, which does not conform to the rigidity of a perverse masculinity. So thank God we've been clearing that. But this fear may still be lingering in your minds of backlash from other people. This is actually a function in some ways of codependency because you're allowing your emotions and how you feel about yourself and your identity come from external factors such as other people and you're prioritizing other people's approval over your own soul. So you have to weigh the costs of that approval of people who don't treat you with respect or empathy or understanding or care or concern or your soul. 
So I want you to really sit with what are the costs for each choice, approval for your soul. And then ask yourself which costs you are willing to live with. Because this has to be a conscious choice. This is how real character is forged. You have to make the tough decisions. You have to know the different components of all your choices, weigh the consequences, and be comfortable living with those consequences, good or bad. Making tough decisions is how you define your character. So if you're not in this practice yet, you have an undefined character, meaning there's nothing fine-tuned, there's nothing forged about it. Um, I'm getting the image of like a, a floppy fish, you know, no spine, nothing to live for, nothing directing you, nothing propelling you towards anything meaningful. When we don't make the effort to forge our character, we end up living an empty life. So weigh the cost between approval from others and your soul. And when we're fearing the backlash of other people, which is essentially just people not supporting us in our truth, and they can become even abusive though, we fear how we're going to defend ourselves against that. So be clear with yourself if you tend to defend your ego in those situations, because it will happen. There will be obstacles. You get to choose how to respond though. You don't have to feed energy or invest your consciousness into anything that is not supporting you on your path, such as with backlash. So when we think about defending ourselves in those situations, what we're actually trying to do is defend our ego. So when you catch yourself in that scenario, ask yourself, how can I instead defend my soul, defend my truth, not my ego? Being a truth teller does mean getting comfortable with being disliked. And I know for people who have strong codependent patterns, that sounds horrible to hear or to consider bearing. But as you heal your codependency and you tap into the strength and the purpose of your soul, you realize that it doesn't detract anything from your life to be disliked, even to be widely disliked. At the end of the day, you have to live with yourself. So do what is necessary to like yourself, live within your integrity. At the end of this life, it's you who goes on with this soul. Your soul will carry all of the consequences of your choices. So you actually have to live with yourself for eternity. Make sure you can do that. So while you're stepping into your role as truth teller, always retain your focus on what your purpose is in telling the truth. And more so on a philosophy behind telling the truth. Why is telling your truth right? Or good? What is the deeper purpose behind it? And this is going to be individual to you, but I'll give you an example of my deeper philosophy behind being a truth teller. My primary philosophy is to honor God. So this is the deeper motivation coming through me. Other philosophies behind truth telling for me are to provide healing for others, to let other people know that they are not alone in what they're going through, to create clarity and to help people make sense of chaos, confusion, and darkness that they've been living. And in doing so, let them know that they're not alone in this. 
and that there is a light out. So the feelings behind those philosophies I shared, that, that is the meats of the philosophy, the feeling. And your philosophy directs your action. It informs your action. So the action being truth telling, but you have to have that foundational philosophy backing you up. So always keep that in sight as you face any obstacles or fears on your path. Always reconnect to your philosophy, the deeper reason why you're doing this, and don't pander to the lower level responses that you may be getting. Don't pander to unintelligent responses, cruel responses, narcissistic responses. Remember also who you're doing this for. Keep them in your mind's eye when you speak, when you're faced with backlash or other challenges. Your, your audience or who you're doing this for is not for those people who are attacking you. You have to remember there are people out there who need you, who may even be unknowingly waiting for a key to the truth that only you hold, which will unlock or activate a healing for them or a revelation for them, an insight for them that is life-changing. And there's a specific obstacle that a lot of truth tellers run up against, this internal obstacle, this re internal resistance they run up against before stepping out to speak their truth. And that is that they'll be alone in it. That no one else will be able to join them in their reality, not even understand the reality. And so for those of you who feel like that, I want you to think about this. You're not the only one feeling that. So that means that you won't be alone. And so then can you think about stepping up to speak your truth so that other people don't have to have that feeling of being alone, that feeling that's causing you pain right now, you can help to take that pain away from somebody else by speaking up. And you might not ever encounter or converse with someone who does connect to your message, someone who identifies with it, someone who is so grateful for it, but it doesn't mean they're not there. It doesn't mean that they're not watching or listening. Maybe it's happening today that they're connecting to your message. Maybe it will happen 10 years from now, but let's remember that value of life. If it happens for one person 10 years from now, 100 years from now, is that not worth something? This is the philosophy I've had to really reconnect to, to stay focused on in on my journey because I, I, I'm a truth teller and with a lot of opposition and not much vocal support. But I'll tell you what, the times when I refocus on the fact that this could be helping someone somewhere today or 10 years from now, I actually get that reflected back to me. I'll recognize that there is one person today who I am helping on a profound level. And I'm so lucky that there's a handful of people that I am helping on a profound level in the present time. You know, we tend to, to look for numbers, measure, we measure value in numbers. And again, that's the ego, the ego likes measurements. But wow, if you can change one person's life, wow. If you can change five people's lives, wow. This is freaking miraculous. 
So I want you all to consider this. A lot of the messages I share today came from my personal experience and also that which is being expressed from each of my clients. So you're obviously not alone in this. You're seeing me in this video right now. I'm a real person. We might not ever meet or speak directly, but we're not the only ones going through this. And my clientele are mostly MK Ultra survivors. I'm an MK Ultra survivor. And our plight is largely around feeling ostracized, abandoned, isolated, disliked if we speak our truth and honor our truth. But let me be the, the relay on behalf of the handful of MK Ultra survivors I'm working with. You're not alone. You're not the only one. And something that also tends to make MK Ultra survivors feel isolated is how their experiences are just so discordant to the nature of reality that we have all been fed, the illusory reality, the illusion. I'm gonna just tell you now, I've spoken to, I mean, you know, not hundreds, but I've spoken to dozens of survivors and we all got weird stories. When you can accept the true nature of reality, you come to realize the illusion, the lies that we have been conditioned to and the fact that everybody's been buying into that lie, that's weirder than truth. So I just want you to know, whatever your experience is, somebody else has gone through it too. And you know that, you know you didn't go through the program alone. So just to add a side note, if you do want to work with me, rest assured, there's nothing that you would share with me that would shock me. Even the dark stuff and the painful stuff, I know how bad it gets. And also the metaphysical stuff that you assumed was impossible. I know how true that is. So if you do want to work with me for deep healing, my email address is in my YouTube about section and my Facebook page where all my services are offered from is linked in the description box below. And I have one final message for truth tellers, a word of caution um, to watch yourself for any states of desperation. So as you're embarking on a challenging path and you have you know, a lot of trauma that you may be healing, you may have needs that if they've gone ignored or unfulfilled long enough, they reach a state of desperation. And when somebody comes along and offers to meet that need when you're in that desperate state, that is a recipe for a trauma bond. So you want to watch yourself when you're feeling this desperation, pull your energy back in, pause and say, okay, I'm seeking something that I need outside of me. I'm reaching out of desperation. I'm seeking externally, but this needs to come from within and or from the true source of life. God, the divine, the creator. And so in that pause state, ask yourself, how can I fulfill this need that has been ignored for so long? And that's why it's feeling desperate, just because it's been ignored for so long. And the moment you can act on that, it's, it's no longer a desperation. And you may have to repeat this process for even the same thing. But when you're reaching out to someone in a state of desperation and it seems like they're offering to meet that need, that can create a trauma bond, which is also what energetic cords are. 
if you've heard people talk about energetic cords before, they are the energetic or spiritual manifestation of trauma bonds. So a trauma bond describes what's happening on a psychological level. So these are synonymous. They're just different expressions of the same matter. And so you could even, when you're in that state of desperation and you're about to latch on to someone who seems like they're offering to meet your need, you can actually feel an energetic cord emerging from your body and reaching out to them. So when you pause in observation of this, you can call your energy back to yourself, retract that cord, put it back inside you, and you can actually prevent cords from, you can stop them from attaching even as they're emerging. So you might be desperate for material things, you know, food, money, shelter. You might be desperate for words of encouragement. It's just positive messages. If all you've gotten are negative messages, you might be desperate for some positive words. You, so that might be that you're also desperate for approval, desperate for validation, desperate for a certain outcome with your truth movement. So just recognize these needs get met in a healthy way from within tapping into your eternal essence, your soul, which comes from the all that is, God. So inquire with your soul, how can I meet this need in a healthy way? So in conclusion, there is a tidal wave forming of change, of revelations. We might not be able to predict what that's going to look like, how it's going to manifest, but it is going to be a direct result from each person individually aligning to their truth and speaking up and expressing their truth. It is big, this tidal wave that's coming, this revelation that's coming, and it may even be different waves that seem not connected, that seem like they belong to different oceans, different subject matters, but they're actually all connected. A lot of what we've seen so far with revelations in particular about abuse, I'm going to speak to that specifically right now, a lot of the revelations have been centered around a paradigm of entertainment. The public actually relates to this information as entertainment. The proof is in the pudding. Go check out my whistleblower channel. I'm talking about the MK Ultra of every last asylum seeker on the planet. The fact that every asylum seeker is an MK Ultra slave subjected to satanic ritual abuse. I talk about the attempted murder of one of the asylum seekers that I directly witnessed and intervened. And how many views do those videos have in comparison to the video where I talk about my family's association with a celebrity, Jimi Hendrix? I want you to ask yourself, is the tortured lives of asylum seekers disrupting your sleep at night? Is it making you angry? Has what I've described made you angry? If your answer to any of that is no, it has never disrupted your sleep, it has never made you angry, Ask yourself why. But the tide is changing. And that's part of the consciousness behind this new movement, this new tidal wave. It's going to be integrity based and not entertainment based. There are those of us containing pieces of truth. Let me get specific. There are 
MK Ultra survivors holding pieces of truth to the entertainment based stories that the public knows thus far. You know, think about these pedophile scandals that are always focused on celebrities. Like you think celebrities are the only ones who can traffic people, like wake the fuck up world. Sorry, sidetracked there. But ask yourself why there have been no stories of MK Ultra perpetrated by those pedophiles, those human traffickers. The story is being managed and filtered to fit a paradigm of entertainment. It's being sculpted to maintain the concept of it's outside of your personal life. It's happening somewhere out there. MK Ultra is happening everywhere. MK Ultra is happening in your town. Whether you live out in the sticks or you live in a big city, I can guarantee you, you know Illuminati perpetrators and you know MK Ultra slaves. This is a global problem. This is a shared problem. It's not a them problem. It's not an other problem. And so for as long as we make these revelations of secrets about entertainment, we disconnect ourselves from the rest of the world. It's, something, it's a show happening around us that we get to consume. Fear and drama and panic are modalities of entertainment that we have been conditioned to and that we accept. I mean, there's a whole genre of horror for fictional movies or books even. That affirms to you that we are consuming fear and horror as entertainment. And it's no different with these news stories that we are keeping at a distance. They happen outside of us so that we can be entertained by them rather than letting that information change our awareness about our place in the world and the world we live in, which we share with billions of people. We're not using that information to better ourselves, to learn, grow and develop. So we all must make the choice to use this information for those legitimate reasons for anything to change. And it's why I haven't come out in my expose about celebrities or prominent people of the public eye. If you go to my whistleblowing Facebook page and YouTube or BitChute channel, in the cover photo or in the, the general description of any of those, you'll see that I state my platform will be ongoing throughout my life and it will include testimony about civilians and celebrities, small businesses and corporates. So I'm making it known that there is more to my story than what I've shared thus far. I will not come out, I will not start out with enter whatever you will want to take as entertainment. So I've started my expose on a foundation built from integrity, speaking out, from that deeper philosophy that I talked about. And if that doesn't get me views right away, I'm fine with that. Who are the people I'm speaking to anyways? Like I said, you have to keep in mind your real audience. I'm not pandering to the entertainment class. 
I'm creating content for people who need healing and who are seeking to better their lives. I, I'm just gobsmacked and I actually find it tragic that my video that mentions Jimi Hendrix is like 10 times or 20 times more popular than the video where I talk about a woman who the UK government and their hired Illuminati charities tried to murder. A woman who is still alive and still facing that plight. A woman who I do name, Rakia Bibi. I just can't believe that a celebrity that most people alive today weren't even alive when he was. This is a celebrity that's been dead for decades. You didn't have a personal relationship with him. Why does he matter to you more than this woman who is alive and suffering today? People didn't watch my video about Jimi Hendrix to hear about Jimi Hendrix's plight. They watched it for the entertainment. People didn't watch that video to hear about how that confirms my family's connection to the Illuminati and therefore confirms all of the other stories and testimonies that I've been sharing with you. They just wanted drama on Jimmy or drama on me. But of those thousands of views of that video, I don't see any one of you showing up to support me. So I urge every one of you who is watching to this point, if you've watched to this point, it's likely that you're listening because you want to develop yourself. But if you randomly click to the end of this video and you're here, I implore you as well to ask yourself, are you here for entertainment or are you here to help create a better world? If I seemed angry a minute ago there, yeah, I am, rightfully so. I'm angry for the fact that millions of people alive today are being abused and that's being ignored. I'm angry that people don't care about that, that they care more about fucking entertainment. So with that being said, I saved this for the end for a reason, for those who actually want to know the story, who are aiming to live aligned with their integrity I will soon be coming forward with disclosure about high profile abusers. And by high profile, that simply means that their identity is already known by many people in the public. Does it make them more important than anyone else? Does it mean the abuse they carried out was worse than the abuse carried out by people whose names you don't know. And what's key here is the known people are going to be connecting you to the unknown people. These high profile people are working or have worked with low profile people they're all doing the same crimes though. They all have the same corrupt character. And one of the reasons why I was inspired to start laying the groundwork for this disclosure is the fact that I've had more than one client disclose that they shared this abuser as well. And they are aligned with the same vision of myself, integrity, healing. And so I want to help create space for each of us 
and the other MK Ultra victims who are in the shadows who none of us know yet. I want to help create space for them to come forward and provide the piece of the truth that they possess. Everybody on the planet through their unique life, their unique soul, their unique experiences, their unique perspective, every one of us contains a piece of truth that nobody else holds. We possess something nobody else can possess. And so it's like we're all puzzle pieces and we all have to plug our piece of the puzzle into the bigger picture for the whole truth to be known. And just to touch on my upcoming disclosure of a particular high profile perpetrator of MK Ultra. This is a long time coming for me. This is at least three years in the making where it's been in my focus. At first, I didn't know exactly what it was. I was channeling the name of the perpetrator. Their name was just flowing through me. And at the time, I didn't know exactly what it was because I was also channeling a lot of health information. I was intuitively healing my body. And there was a medical condition that shares the name of the perpetrator. So I freaking thought I was channeling information about this medical condition to heal it in myself. Fuck did I know that there was so much waiting there to be realized. So we're going into new territory. There are going to be other disclosures before the high profile one um, that I'm going to have to put into place to put everything into context. And so I do implore you to give as much thought and value to the disclosures of people who don't have a household name, but should have a household name for being equally evil. And, you know, this video is so relevant to any truth teller and especially MK Ultra survivors. I had a conversation with a client today, and if she watches this, she's probably going to think, is this video about our conversation? Is it about me? And the thing is, I've had some version of that conversation with so many people because it's so relevant. And what I've shared today um, has been soul perspectives that I've forged. Um, so she knows from her session uh, that she was facilitated to connect to her soul. And what's interesting is the wisdom and philosophy of her soul happens to be very resonant to what's come through my soul years ago. Some things like even verbatim. And that's not so uncommon when people have, when people are connecting to their soul. We tend to discover our soul purpose and wisdom and philosophies have some similarities, especially if we have similar life purposes, such as being a truth teller. So, you know, this client may be thinking, she made a video based on what I said. And what she said was so relevant to so many people, including myself. And this is uh, philosophies that I've connected to a while back and so it's so great that other people are stepping into their truth as well it's not just her and it's not just me so let us remember that we are all connected we are all in this life together and the best thing you can do is connect to your soul 
and live from your soul integrity. So thank you for your time and attention. And I'll see you all in the tidal wave.